and I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice, take joy like He in what you hear, let us be a sweet, sweet sound. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you Mother, Father, God, we thank you this morning for another day that we can come and assemble ourselves together for the purpose of being your availability in the earth. Help us to totally get out of the way and be a clear channel for your love and your spirit to flow from every direction of this place that we call Unity of Charlotte. We want to pray for all of those who have a need today that are here. Those who are viewing us through television and YouTube. That the vibration and the frequency of intent of these prayers will go out to them whenever they're in tune with this service. We pray for those today that are in this interesting and challenging time of campaign for leadership of our nation. I pray for Hillary Clinton and her people and I pray for Donald Trump and his people. That we look for your intervention and sovereignty to take place for the highest good of all people from every nation, every race, every religion, every creed, every orientation. Now bless this service and guide us through your spirit that we may be touched when we leave this place today. We say thank you, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your leadership. And so it is. And join us. Oh, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let us be a sweet, sweet sound. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our contemplation part of our service. We want to welcome each and every one of you that have come out early to be a part of the meditation and the contemplation part of our service. We want to welcome this wonderful choir today. Now we got a real choir here this morning, don't we? I said we have more in the choir than out there. We got to look at it. <laughs> it's amazing. Let's do our vision and our mission statement. If you join with me, the vision statement first, please. We awaken and express humanity's divinity through spirit-led, heart-driven, progressive spirituality. Join me in the mission statement. We apply life-enhancing July power by understanding. <laughs> Again, we apply life enhancing universal principles leading to co creative, mature, spiritual adults who accept responsibility for the destiny of humanity. 
found the love of power to the power of love. Just let us for a moment meditate upon these words that we just have said. So it is. And our prayer chaplain will give our daily word this morning. I believe it is Horus. Yay, Horus. Unity family. Good morning. <sighs> thank you. It feels awesome to be back. And I think this morning's daily word is so appropriate, and I feel very honored and both humbled as well to read it because it's all about prayer. All right. I pray with faith and answered prayer. We know about that, don't we? When I pray, I am consciously connecting with God. And when I pray, I pray for many reasons. I remember to always pray from a place of faith. I pray affirming this or something better and I let it go holding on to a concern only dampens my prayer energy I pray in faith that all is working out for the best and highest good for all involved Mind and heart unite while I while I envision the answered prayer I seek. And I listen in faith. I discern the voice and activity of God. And this comes to me in a variety of ways. Perhaps a feeling, a dream, or a divine idea at the right and perfect time. I listen for and follow my inner guidance in the part of my being, my prayer, my prayer um, to fruition. I move forward with clarity and assurance. Now this is taken from John chapter 16 verse 13. When the spirit of truth comes, he will lead and guide you into all the truth. So I just want to take a minute here to just thank all of you. I think this was so timely for me um, because I definitely, what you're seeing right now, me standing before you is the answer of prayer from all of you. And I can't thank you enough for that. We know the power of prayer in this Unity family, don't we? Yes. So. Thank you. So I want to humbly say that I am your chaplain for today, and I would be more than happy to return the favor from all of you that have been praying and continue to pray for me. And so I want to have the opportunity to pray for you. So I'll be in the um, prayer room uh, at the end of service across from Cafe Unity. So come and see me if you just want to celebrate something, if you have a concern, or you're just happy to see me. 
I'll be right there. Thank you. Thank you, Horace. This morning, the meditation song, we're going to do a chant. This is quite a variety of uh, things this morning. I hope you'll find something you like. This is a Hindu chant that I had learned some time ago. And some of you have mentioned, why don't we do chants once in a while? So here you go. You ask, you get what you ask for. This is Om Namah Shivaya. Not really hard. You're going to just pretty much uh, sing that three times exactly. Om Namah Shivaya. Everybody want to say that with me? Om Namah Shivaya. And then it goes backwards. Shiva Om Namah. Shiva Om Namah. So let's join in the meditation song. Then we will go into meditation and since we didn't have anybody stuff from meditation it seemed like spirit said to me do silent meditation let's just do silent meditation sometimes we think that all space has to be filled with words but sometimes it is just being and listening maybe spirit wants to say something to you today maybe it wants to come through and that's really what meditation is it's listening to the voice of of God within ourselves. I bow to Shiva, the supreme reality, the inner self. It is the name given to consciousness that dwells in all. Shiva is the name of your true identity, yourself. So as you honor the authentic self that is within you with the vibration of these words, the brain does not have to understand these words. The brain says, this is foreign to me. I don't know Hebrew or I don't know Hebrew. Aramaic, or I don't know any other language maybe that you don't know, but it's the intent and the vibration that is in it. So let's sing it again one more time with the understanding that we are recognized the true self that is in everyone together. prepare for the meditation of silence. Let me remind you that silence is not the absence of sound. Actually, it is the most pure sound in all of the universe. The sounds that we hear is when we disrupt silence. For instance, I could hold a tuning fork up here and you would hear nothing but silence. But if I tapped it on something and disrupted it, it would vibrate the silence into different sound. 
Same way with light that's running through a prism. It's the same light, but because of the different frequencies, it shows up as different colors. So silence is airing back to the place in which we've all come from, the great field of possibility from which everything has emerged. So now I invite you, close your eyes. And I know to some of you it'll seem like forever because it is enter into eternity, into the silence, into the silence, into the silence. Thank you. Transitional song.
welcome everyone this morning and especially want to recognize anybody for the first time who is a visitor. Would you let us know if you're... Thank you. And your name is... John. John and... Carla. Nice to have you this morning. You're welcome. welcome. Anybody else I'm missing in the morning? Good. Everybody else is home, folks. That's good. I want to welcome you that are also joining us through uh, our TV uh, cable program and also on YouTube this morning. <laughs> the master teacher, it's recorded, Jesus taught, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not more worthy? And which of you, by worrying and being anxious, can add one unit to the me measure cubit to your stature or to the span of your life? And why should you be anxious about clothes? Consider the lilies of the field and learn thoroughly how they grow and neither toil nor spin. Out of that scripture, a song was written in 1905. And one thing that I'm trying to do here is to give you a diversity of music. But the music that has touched me so early in my life was truly that which is born out of the souls of those who were going through a time in which there was a lot of pain. And I think these songs are classics, such as How Great Thou Art, for instance. Don't think in any way that there's any one group or church that owns any of these songs. They belong to all of us. And this is a great classic for me. His eye is on the sparrow. If you'll let me indulge, I want to tell you a real story that really happened to me. As a child, one of my greatest dreams was to meet someone named Mahalia Jackson. I know you've heard that talked about here, and some of you are too young to know Mahalia, but she was the queen of gospel music back in the 60s and the 70s. Literally, sang before the Queen of England. I happened to see her as on a cameo of a Lana Turner movie. It was an uh, imitation of life. She sang at the funeral. It was the first time that I felt chills go all over me and I be immediately was in love with Mahalia Jackson. I bought her the old records, they were probably 78s or whatever they were in those days, and I wore them out and I played them. And I would listen to WLS. I lived in Tulsa, but I could get Chicago at nine on the radio. And I dreamed about someday knowing Mahalia Jackson. I looked at skylines of Chicago where she lived. I wanted to know Mahalia Jackson. So later in the 60s, when I finally had a, a successful church going in Tulsa, first integrated church in the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in the state, in the city of Tulsa in Oklahoma, made front page. We had exactly half African American, half Caucasian church, which was interestingly to people in the 60s in Oklahoma. I began to be flown to Chicago to speak every Tuesday night. This sounds crazy, but I could fly on Ozark Airline as a minister for $25 from Tulsa to Chicago on Ozark Airlines. So every Tuesday, I got on a plane and flew and spoke at the YMCA in downtown Chicago. And I'd fly back. And one night, a little lady comes up to me. She's so cute. She said, hi, I'm TV Hall, which stood for Develda. And she said, I am the personal assistant to Mahalia Jackson. And Mahalia said, I went home last night. I said, Mahalia, you got to come and hear this white boy preach. <laughs> and Mahalia incognito in a cab comes to the meeting the next night and sang, and I preached my heart out. I didn't have a stitch of dry clothes on. I preached so hard. <laughs> And she took me out, it was very cold, it was in January, and she says, anybody preaches that heart ought to have a little bit of brandy. 
I never had alcohol in my life. It was like, I was going to go to hell if I did that. But, but this was my hell, so I downed it. What I'm saying, we became wonderful, wonderful friends till her passing in 72. But when I would go to Chicago, I would ride with her, and she drove her own car most of the time. It was a beautiful white Cadillac. It was immaculate, except beside her was always this wadded up handkerchief or maybe a paper towel, and it just didn't look right. And I finally asked her, why do you have this beside you in the car? And she says, because there's crumbs, there's little bread crumbs in it. I said, well, that's interesting. She said, I said, why? She said, because if I get really bogged down and anxious and under stress, I just pull over and get in a park and I start feeding the birds. I feed the sparrows because I know if his eye is on the sparrow, I know he hears my prayer. Wow. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing, I sing because, because I'm happy. I sing, I sing because, because I'm free. His eye is on, is on is on the little sparrow. And I know, I know he, watches he watches me. I said I sing, I sing because, because I'm happy. Yeah, I sing, I sing because, because I'm free. The sparrow, and I know, I know he watches, he watches me. me. Sing it again. I said, I sing, I sing because, because I'm happy. I sing, I sing because, because I'm free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know, I know he, watches he watches me. Yes, I know he watches me. Thank you. How many of you heard that song before? Oh, yeah. Good. His eyes on the sparrow. Yes. My message this morning is look up. I know we've been a little heavy and we've been Wednesday talking pain body and we're talking about releasing emotions and we've been kind of heavy, but I thought this morning we need a word of encouragement. I know that it looks like the world is falling apart all around us and it is. And as it should be. This is how evolution takes place. Old patterns and old systems begin to go into a state of instability before they can be reorganized into a higher state. This is proven. Whether you go through science, spirituality, physics, it doesn't matter. But everything that evolves itself must go through a state of crises. So even in your life on an individual level, if your life is a little unstable right now, this is probably the most spiritual thing that could be happening to you. That means you've become an initiate and you've become a candidate 
that is able to leap into a higher state of what it means to be human on this planet. Yes. And if you can turn that into a positive, I am, I am. and that is your power, is to be able to choose this day what you're going to serve. Are you going to serve a creator and a God who has all wisdom and knowledge and knows what it takes for each and every one of us and as a people to grow and mature and the only way out of what we're doing is not in just fixing old systems, but it is evolving into new systems. Yes, yes. So I'm going to begin, and this is where I got the title. They came to Jesus at the end of what was called the world. Now the word world in the Bible doesn't mean earth. A lot of people are talking about the end of the world. And they think the earth is going to come to an end. World is a word that means in the Greek aeon or age. So there's many worlds. Back when there was the age of agriculture gave away to the age of in industry, the industrial age. Now the industrial age in the last few years has given away to the age of technology and computers. We're always ending and beginning a new world, a new system, a new way. Whether it's education, religion, medicine, it doesn't matter where you look. We see everything telling us that it's ready to evolve itself into a more complex but better system. So they came to me and says, what are the signs of this is going to be like? Now what they're talking about here is the end of the age of law. Everybody had been under an age of law of 613 different laws containing ordinances. I know most people think there's only 10 commandments, but actually there's 613 different laws all the way from not eating shrimp and lobster to not mixing uh, the material of linen and wool together. So they were coming out of that into a new world, a new age called the age of grace. And they wanted to know what it was going to be like in their time. And it sounds very much like the same thing because history just, it does repeat itself. It doesn't repeat itself as it was, but it repeats itself as an opportunity to spiral into a higher state. He says there would be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon earth distress, trouble and anguish of nations in bewilderment and perplexity that is without resources, left warning, embarrassed, in doubt, not knowing which way to turn. At the echo, the roaring and the tossing of the sea, men swooning away and expiring with fear. It says men's hearts shall fail them because of fear. I've never seen a time in which fear is motivating people in this atmosphere that we're in politically today. And they will continue to see nations rise against each other. And the heavens will be shaken as well as the earth. And they that shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud. Now, I know in, in literalism what, what you think that means. But it means when you see the, the authentic self arising into your mortal life. When you see all this love that we talk about that's in us arising into our mortal life. When you see the peace that we talk about in every service arising out of your inner self into your mortal life. This is the coming of the Son of Man and that is the glory. The glory is the coming of these attributes, these powers that we talk about from Fillmore. Faith, love, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. All of this is inside of us. And as each one of them arises to take its place into your world. So that you don't have to just go inside to enjoy it. But it's something that emanates from you into the world. When you see this. 
you shall see something that will change. Now here's. Now when you see these things begin to occur, look up and lift your heads because your time is here. So this morning my message to you as you see what is going on in our world, in our state, in our cities, right here. Look up when you see these things. In John 14 and 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. See, this is the thing, people. You can't learn peace. It's not a mental construct. You can't just mentally say, I'm going to be peaceful today. That may last a few seconds, a few moments. I don't know how, how controlled you are and how disciplined you are to stay in that state. But eventually something's going to come along in that day that's going to take you out of that mental peace. Because peace is an innate, inherent part of what has been given to us by our Creator. So he says, I'm not talking about this peace you learn about mentally. I'm talking about that peace that I have given you. A peace that passes understanding. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance and give you courage and strength for every challenge. Also in 1613, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be, und- be filled with joy for I've overcome the world. These are just some promises that we need to hold on to. The, the creator that we serve is a refuge and a strength. In a present and well-proved time of trouble. It says, therefore we will not fear, though the earth shall change, though the mountains be shaken and slip into the heart of the sea. Selah. I love this word, selah. S-E-L-A-H. It's 78 times throughout the book of Psalms. It's a great word, and this is what it means. Pause and think calmly. I want you to remember this word, Selah. Everybody say it with me, Selah. It means a time in which that you are so knocked out consciously by your emotional self. If you just stop and just say to yourself inwardly, Selah, signaling your brain to stop, pause, re-enter, fresh into the situation that you might see it totally different than the way that you're emotionally experiencing it at that time. And it also has another meaning in the Hebrew, but it means sprout. Sprout, such as the sprouting of a resonance. A time of the right brain, artistic, creative energy being released in us and sprouting itself. The light sprouting itself in the time of of darkness for we all carry the incorruptible seed of our creator within us in Hebrews I want to give you this and let us let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds I'm afraid we can't do this by ourselves now I'm not sure you can go isolate yourself off and have enough within you individually But you're going to be greater together. (laughs) That ring a bell? (laughs) We are greater together. And we are in this community going to be greater only together. Knowing each other at a deeper level. Sharing with each other at a deeper level. Moving into the place of the depth of our life, knowing our gifts and sharing them, knowing our experiences and using them, 
and all of the wonderful schools of thought that has drawn us. We've all been drawn to different books to read, workshops that we've gone to, things that we have cultivated in ourselves. And only as we use these things together in, in their diversity that we will find ourselves as a union of people, a group, a community of people becoming stronger. Not forsaking our meeting together. You that get up on Sunday morning and think, well, I'm a little tired today. It'd be easy just to stay home. They'll get along without me. I'm asking you to make a deeper commitment to realize that it's the meeting together as believers that we encourage one another and become stronger. All the more faithfully as you see that day approaching. The founder of Unity, Charles Fillmore, says we must believe in ourselves in this innate spiritual man in us, we must encourage him. Encourage him with what? With sound words, with affirmations of almightiness. Then we should have the key to overcoming the world. Yes. Please, I encourage you. Encourage one another. Compliment one another. We don't have to feed the ego. It's not what I'm talking about. But if you feel something loving and wonderful, express it. If somebody looks nice, tell them. If somebody has done something even small and insignificant, make them feel worthy for it. Don't miss a thing. Be observant about this community and who does what and who contributes what. And encourage. Strengthen. Each and every one of us. One more from Charles Fillmore. In our study and application of spiritual life. We all have times when we are spiritually uplifted. Such a time is marked by a form of spiritual enthusiasm. Which is brought about by statements of truth. Made by ourselves and others. Prayers, words of praise, songs, meditations. Any statement of truth that exalts the spiritual realm. Encourage one another. So I say to you this morning, if you're going through something, if you've got a health issue, you've been diagnosed with something, and you're dealing with something on a physical level, look up. If you've got some emotional or mental situation going on, depression or anxiety or any fear that is something you're dealing with you, I want to encourage you, look up. If you've got a financial situation and you don't know, know how you're going to make it from month to month or week from week, look up. Yes. If you don't understand what's going on out there in this political world and it looks like it's just crumbling before you, look up. <laughs> so looking up means raise your consciousness. It also means, for you that went through the quantum jumping, is that we know in science that everything that ever could be or was is now. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Let me quote it again. Anything that ever was shall be and that which shall be is now. That means that there is no lack. You can't buy into a belief of lack. Huh? You've got to realize that anything that you are desiring in your life is only waiting to be manifested because it already exists. Somebody help me now. Right. I think I'll preach a little bit now. I've been talking. All, right. Come on now. Come on. All you got to do is just raise your consciousness and look up. And begin to speak it. And your brain will tell you, but it's not happening. I don't see it. But faith says, I see those things which are not seen. Yes, yes I believe in those things. Amen. In which my eyes and my five senses cannot see. So I want you this morning to look up. Yes. I want us as a community to look up. And realize that we're a thriving, blessed community. Yes, we're going through changes. I know you feel the transition that's going on. But I'm going to look up. I don't know what's going on either, but I'm going to look up. 
We are more and more being taught to be more spirit guided and more spirit led. Moving away more from the organizing of just literalism into a place in which we can learn how to be clear vessels and channels for the spirit to move through us and out into the world. I want you to realize that even though there's a few of us in a room, that that heart within you and that spirit within you doesn't know the walls of this room. Doesn't know the boundaries of this room. So again, I leave you with this. Whenever you look down and you feel down and you feel discouraged and you're not sure about your life and where it's taking you, just remember, look up. When you see these things happening, just look up. And so it will be. And I'm sweating. Woo. Look up. Look up. Simple. That's all I'm leaving you with. Just keep that in your head. Remember, I went to church on Sunday and he said, look up. And I'm looking up today. Motion in an ever expanded upward promotion. Deep down deep in the ever emotion, like a lavender oil, sweet healing lotion. Let love grow. Let love grow. Let love propel you to take that leap. Let love grow. Under a map, water some stomp too deep. Let love grow. New horizons and far-fetched places to empty but vibrant galactic places. Every grip is on the limitless basis, reading off the love of the rock of ages. Let love grow. Let love grow. Woo -hoo. Hey, boy. You never saw Let love grow And splash all around you Like a waterfall Let love grow And let it flow down Through your darkest abyss I love to turn the light on If you persist But you know life is so much more Than this If you let the love Lead you to eternal bliss to raise my hand, the first to state my opinion, and the first to take a stand. I won't play it safe 
or wait for a sign I'm gonna throw myself out there and let my light shine let it shine let it shine I let my big bright brilliant beam of radiant light shine Ooh, girl I'll be with Oprah and Deepak 60 minutes and the view They'll be talking about me And all the things I do I'll be the one who sets the bar The one who's in the know I'll attract all that I need Because I'm in the flow And I'll shine Yes, I'll shine I let my big, bright, brilliant Beam of radiant light shine For too many years I hid my light, fearing I was too much or who I was just wasn't right. But I heard this voice from within and up above saying you're here to be a shining light, to give and receive love. I'm going for my dreams, nothing's in my way. Carpe diem is my mantra, practice kindness every day. I take time to connect. I take time to have fun. I want to know I've used up every drop before my life is done. So I'll shine. Yes, I'll shine. I let my big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. Now, this is the dance break part. Woo. That's a young Texas two step. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know one, but, <laughs> or two. <laughs> Many years I hid my light, fearing I was too much or who I was just wasn't right. But I heard this voice from within and up above saying, You're here to be a shining light, to give and receive love. I am a woman of power, yes, you are. a woman mm -hmm. of grace. The life that I've lived is every wrinkle on my face. I love myself so I can love you too. I know when we're connected, there ain't nothing we can't do. So let's shine, let's all shine. Let's let our big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. Oh, shine, let me see you shine. Let's let our big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. Oh, yeah, sing it loud. Let's let our big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. Oh, yeah, last time through. Let's let our big, bright, brilliant beam of radiant light shine. Every girl and boy, walk your 
tough Share your art, embrace your dreams and follow your heart Cause it ain't how you make a living It's what you're living for Live your dream It's what you're meant to do Live your dream Let your world light shine through It's your gift Go ahead and use it Sing and dance to your own music Don't spend your life just dreaming Live your